Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from idraautomation.com and welcome to another video for Idra Automation. and today we can talk about is automation testing still worth it in year 2020? This topic seems to be like a controversial topic of Idra Automation because we have been talking just about automation testing all these days at least eight years now but I'm suddenly talking about is automation testing still worth it in year 2020? Which seems to be like controversial but it's not but let's quickly discuss about it. So the problem statement for this problem is these. Everyone is running behind automation testing, but is it still worth it to go with automation testing in first place? And market is booming for automation testing and even though the companies are not really doing or relaying on automation testing, still prefers you to have an automation testing tool knowledge. But the question is, do we really require automation testing if so, is automation testing really adding value to their realistic testing or are we just doing it? If not, then what are the areas needs to be improved in automation testing to be more realistic? So these are some of the most important problem statements we need to answer before even choosing automation testing and deciding whether automation testing is still worth it in year 2020. And we are going to be really talking about all these problems in much detail in this particular video. Alright, so let's get started. So the problem statement can be seen in twofold and one is performing a realistic testing and another one is performing the automation testing for the sake of doing it. Well, again, it seems to be a little controversial, but don't worry about it yet. We'll be talking about it. So we are going to talk about the first one, performing automation testing for the sake of doing it. But as you can see, we are really talking about just the problems, but we need to somehow come to a solution for the problem that we are really looking at it. We cannot solve our problem with the same thinking we used when we created them. This quote was really inspiring by Albert Einstein. I really feel that this is something we need to see the problem out of the box, but not just within the problem itself. So the first one, performing automation for the sake of doing it. So let's quickly understand why we should be doing this. Again, the problem statement. Do anyone really wants to do this in first place? Everyone will disagree and say, we are not doing testing for the sake of doing it, right? Who really want to do that automation for the sake of doing it? But what I really mean in here is, if we don't really test each crucial components of our product or the customer experience in our product, then probably we're not doing a realistic testing in here. Again, customer experience in here means what customer really experience while using your product or what are the most important part of the product which the customer really uses. I've worked in many different industries and the crucial components of the product really, really differs based on the industry itself. So if you are working on a product which is developed for a software engineers, mostly like a CMS platform or a software platform which is developed exclusively for software engineers you really have to worry about the software that you are building itself because the end user of your product is going to be the software engineers so they are going to make use of your software to use within actual computer that they have so the configuration changes and the user who are going to use are going to really do a hard testing of your application whereas if you're going to be working for an application which is developed for an industry-based customers, then probably you don't really have to worry a lot about the user experience or the advanced technology in it. The reason being the industry people who are going to be using your applications are going to mostly focus on the actual component of the product which is told by them. So they don't really give a lot of importance about how the software performance is and stuff. They just live with it. So the crucial components changes based on how the actual application is being used based on the ecosystem. For an inventory or a billing based application, maybe the barcode scanning testing is more crucial than its actual user interface testing itself. If you can see the inventory based application used in some of the outlets, people will be using the barcode scanning for entry of the data and selling the product. And they don't really give a lot of importance to the actual user interface itself. If you have really seen some of the kiosk for entering the data or maybe scanning the application, you can see the UI is really horrible than the actual application that you are testing for React or Vue.js or something like that. The reason being they don't really give a lot of importance to the UI in here. Rather, 
the actual device which they are using is the most important part of their application. Similarly, for a payment API application, its payment gateway or the FPAS is more crucial than its actual customer experiences itself. So you need to test the actual payment gateway than the actual application that you are really working with. Similarly, for a statistic infographic application, charts will be the most crucial part of the application than its API itself. And similarly, for a real-time messaging application, it's the notification and messages. So you can see it changes based on the actual application itself. But you can see most of the time, we always begin with the logging of the application and the entry of the username. And then we start thinking about the framework. Then we start thinking about the tools and stuff, but not the actual application, which the customer is going to be really using with. So some of the common problem that I have really categorized is going to be these while we start doing the automation testing. And I have seen this every time happens in any companies while the automation testing begins. So some of the common problem forcing to do an unrealistic automation are these. Cannot automate all the component of the product such as testing involves real devices, scanners, hardwares, and third-party charts and graphs and PDFs. So I've seen these people really talking about that. And you can see these things you have heard many times. And just think of this. While the application that you are testing is going to involve these devices, and these are some of the crucial components of your application, and if you ignore them not to be tested, then is your application automation that you are doing is realistic? Just ask yourself. And then cannot automate multiple browsers sometimes blaming IE is not working, Edge is deprecated for Chrome and Safari can only run on Mac and things. Well, if you have seen and I've been working with the banking application a lot, most of the banking are still using Internet Explorer as the browser of their choice. So they have to somehow live with Internet Explorer, somehow use their application. And if you don't really give a lot of importance to the Internet Explorer, then probably the most important part of the testing that we are doing in automation is something that we are missing. Again, that's not a realistic automation. That's an unrealistic automation. And then negligibly automating microservice based application as a monolith application and only testing the UI API and database in silos. If you're going to be testing the UI API and database in silos, then again, you should be building one more automation to interconnect all of them and work with them. But again, if you think here with a microservice based application, if you are testing all these UI API and database in a separate silos, and then we are testing the application itself separately, then we are not really testing a microservice based application really as a microservice based application. Rather, we are testing that as a monolith application and there is no point that we are testing it correctly. And again, that's an unrealistic automation testing. And finally, focusing too much on the tools and languages and shaping automation testing based on the tools limitation. And again, I have talked about this a couple of days before in LinkedIn, and I've seen a lot of responses coming in pretty positive, like what we really th think about. So again, we'll be talking about that in a minute. Don't worry about it. So these are the common problem which are forcing to do the unrealistic automation. So we have seen more about unrealistic automation thing here. So let's talk about some of the realistic automation testing. So in this case, the realistic automation, we are going to give some of the solution for the unrealistic automation that we talked earlier. The first one is the hardware components testing. There are many ways we can do the testing of the hardwares. For sure, it is not as straightforward as the UI testing of the application, like using Selenium or any other tools, but can be achieved using device emulator in the worst case, because again, it's going to be a software that we have seen like Android emulator or iOS simulator. Similarly, device SDK exposed APIs. So this is something which the testers really have to talk about. We have seen device SDKs are actually being used by the developers. So what if the testers really take control of those APIs, which is exposed by the SDKs, and they use the same APIs to be used for testing the actual devices? That brings the actual testing of the application. Similarly, chip reading for the credit card with magnetic scanner. In my previous company, while I was working in here in New Zealand, I have seen a couple of guys actually really automated the magnetic scanning of the application really automated the credit card testing so you don't really have to insert every time the credit card they magnetized and demagnetized by changing the actual 
card type like Visa to MasterCard and stuff. And then you can see that it really brought a lot of flexibility for the team to test the credit card functionality of the application and it saved so much of time. That's a realistic testing. Similarly, third party service supporting the testings are also there so we can make use of that and then we can bring into the, our, our testing if we couldn't able to completely achieve like 100 percentage then we should go with them to see if they are actually supporting it so we should be exploring those options not just sitting within what we know and then using vendor specific automation recommendations so if you can see most of these hardware components come with the vendor specific automation recommendation they also know that this can be automated because now it's internet of things type people are really moving towards automation the companies are really aware of so you can just go and talk to them they will tell you how that can be achieved it's not the end of the world they for sure should have some option to do it so if it is completely not there then it can it can be agreed but for sure if they have something we should be exploring in those areas that's what the realistic automation testing is bringing benefit to the application that we're really testing about. That's the hardware component testing. And next one is the charts and graph testing. So most of the third party charts and graph plugins provide support of Selenium automation API. So if you're really looking at it, for instance, Telerik and DevExpress and Jasper reports, which is hardly people are using it, but still those are some of the third party chart providers who really support selenium automation i know it's pretty hard i've seen it's really pain then compared to the straightforward automation but since you have the license of the Telerik or dev express you can have a ticket with the support team and then you can see how you can effectively automate those controls or at least how you can use their apis to test the application in a realistic manner rather completely ignoring charts when it comes for automation and saying automation won't support that that's again something we need to be focusing about and the next one is automating microservice based architecture app as it is not in silos so automating microservice based application is crucial as it has many moving parts and they still sit in various environments such as kubernetes cluster docker images bare metal machines private cloud etc so i've seen companies working with all these things within a same application i'm not really talking about multiple application just one application which is spanning across all these categories so how we really test these kind of stuff so testing application without considering its complexity in architecture by just automating the ui api and database layer in silos will always be unrealistic and should be tested as a whole so this is one of the most major important aspect while automating an application and because applications are now moving away from monolith architecture and towards the microservice based architecture you can see that these are something which is kind of gaining more popularity people are moving towards it for sure testers have to upgrade their knowledge and should be focusing more on this area as well so how this can be achieved and again this can be achieved in a much much straightforward manner by bringing knowledge among the testers on Kubernetes clusters, Docker containers, and how to play around with the services like AWS, Azure services, and more, will have a great involvement for testers to perform the testing realistically. And by involving testers in the application deployment phase, which is also something great, rather just after deployment, will be very harder for testers to get a big picture. Hence, it's a better idea to align tester with all the knowledge and involve them during the application deployment phase and tell them in the architectures and the deployment that and how the application components are spanned across the ecosystems and how they can be tested. So these are something that makes the automation more realistic while doing the microservice based application. And finally, the automation testing tools. So again, I posted a message on the LinkedIn as a post like a couple of days before like is automation testing is getting overburden or is the tools getting overburden because we are seeing that the automation testing is fading out or losing its actual essence to the automation testing tool which is really kind of crazy right there are many cool automation testing tools available in the market but it's testers and teams job to understand which tool to choose and go with and the more complex the language and tools to use are, the less likely you are going to bring quality of the product you are testing with. 
So I've seen people starting to use uh, some of the complex language which the team has no knowledge about and something like Python or even the JavaScript language and they start using it and they end up screwing up the whole team of not doing any automation and the team start finding excuses of saying they cannot do automation testing because of the language or because they don't get the time and then finally the whole automation comes into a complete ground zero level. So instead of those things to happen, we should be focusing on what is the team's flexibility, what the team has the knowledge, and then improve the automation testing based on what the team requires and what the application actually requires and whatever that we discussed before, focusing on the customer experience and the actual application's business, and then choosing the automation testing tool based on that, not just because what the team is comfortable of, like I told before, like a controversial, and then how fast we can achieve our test cases by just ticking some check boxes saying that we have completed this, 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 and bringing a green report for the team just to make them happy. But again, if it is unrealistic, then what is the point of having them? And again, the goal of the automation is to bring the quality to the product, not making automation as another product to be tested and i have seen this happening as well like a lot of people focusing more towards framework development on the automation side leaving what actual automation testing is all about which is very very crazy and even more dangerous for the whole company so holistically whatever we have discussed so far the automation should focus on these like components testing application architecture and the actual business if we have all these things within our automation testing, then we could probably say automation testing is doing a realistic job and that's when we really require automation testing. So finally, the conclusion is this. In year 2020, we still require automation testing, but in a more realistic sense, rather focusing too much towards tools that is available in the market. There are going to be even more tools coming in for sure in this year, next year, and the following years. But it is very important for us to, as a quality engineer, to see how we can help our business to achieve a quality product by bringing a quality automation, not a quantity automation. So once again, thank you. And let me know your thoughts and what you think about the discussion that we had and put your comments below and also please let me know what are the other areas that you have feel that automation is not really bringing the value or what are the other areas which you feel that the automation is really bringing the value or maybe i'm wrong in this discussion just put your comments below we can really discuss about it and we can make a separate part on it so once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day